Welcome, I'm Rabbi Phil Bressler of Beit Am in Corvallis, Oregon, and this is the daily summary video for the Kitsur Shulchan Aruch Yomi Daily Halakha Learning Project, covering the passage from Simon 80, Se'if 46, to Simon 80, Se'if 60. You can find links to the Hebrew and English text of this passage and to the calendar of upcoming passages in this video's description. We're still talking about Milachot on Shabbat for about the next week or so. Wrapping up knot tying, not only is tying knots prohibited, but untying knots that would be prohibited to tie is also prohibited. Let me say that again. Untying knots that would be prohibited to tie is also prohibited. Now here's some other things that have to do with, uh, or that are like tying or untying a knot, or at least have to do with strings, I guess. Removing basting stitches, those are those long uh, stitches used initially in, in sewing to hold pieces together, is uh, prohibited, not because it's untying a knot per se, but it's the final step towards finishing the garment that you're working on. So it's actually like number 38, striking the final hammer blow. Adding a drawstring to a garment, also a prohibited fi finishing touch on a new garment. However, it's again, not the act itself that's prohibited. Putting a, draw a new drawstring, say, in an old garment is uh, permitted. You can also put your belt through your belt loops, even on new pants, that's totally fine. And pulling on a thread so that the stitches close up and tighten is prohibited. That's too close to number 23, sewing. Back to a kind of miscellany of Milachot. If two pages are stuck together in a book, say, it's okay to pull them apart. I guess you might have thought that would be maybe number 24, tearing, but two pages that get stuck, okay to pull them apart. If a container is closed with a cloth tied upon it uh, with string, you can tear open the cloth to get at what's inside. The footnotes on this Saif add some more detail on how exactly to do this. I gather it's a bit more complex than just simply tearing it open. It's forbidden to capture or kill any living thing on Shabbat, even bugs. And here we have something in common with our, uh, our Buddhist uh, friends. Number 25 and number 26, Milachot, uh, forbid capturing or killing any living thing on Shabbat at least. It's forbidden even to draw blood or promote bleeding on Shabbat. This is a derivative of number 26, slaughtering. So also don't re remove a hangnail. That's number 27, flaying, because it counts as removing skin. And then we get into some food-related stuff. Don't pour liquids into vinegar so that they too become vinegar. That's considered pickling, which counts as cooking by rabbinic prohibition. Did you know that the reason that some salt is labeled kosher salt is actually because it's koshering salt. Koshering salt means it's salt used in the process of preparing kosher meat. So kosher meat has to be salted in order to dry out all the blood within three days of the animal slaughter, or else it needs to get a thorough rinse at that point. So if your third day is Shabbat and you haven't salted yet, you're gonna need to do a rinse, uh, but you need to get a non-Jew non -Jew to do it for you. You are, however, permitted to do that so you don't sustain a loss uh, by that meat becoming unkosher. You can spread your butter or your cream cheese, etc., on your bagel or your bread, but you can't smear plaster or wax or tar in a hole to close it. So even though you are covering those holes in your bread with your cream cheese or butter, that's okay, but you can't be filling up holes with substances to plug them. Don't break or cut anything that's not food, but cutting apart any of your food is totally fine. And finally, trees. Don't touch them on Shabbat. There's just nothing you can do with or to a tree that's not somehow prohibited. Even just shaking a branch a little bit is very likely to cause leaves to fall, which would be number three, reaping. So Kitsur spends a lot of time saying, basically stay away from trees entirely on Shabbat. That's all for today. As always, our learning is dedicated to Rabbi Shlomo Gansfried, the author of the Kitsur and the historic Jewish community of Ujarad, Ukraine. We'll see you tomorrow.